and welcome to the Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Danny Johnson, or Danny J, as she's known, who is in Cheyenne, Wyoming today. How are you doing, Danny? I am doing really, really well. <laughs> Good to be here. Yeah. And Danny is a serial entrepreneur. Uh, you know, she's uh, owned successful personal training, online training businesses. She has a no excuses um, philosophy. She now goes and helps businesses uh, with their, getting their brand and getting their message out, increasing revenue, helping people get out of debt, all this great stuff. But she does it from a position of uh, taking control and, and no excuses, which I love. And I thought today, so we're in Q4 uh, for a lot of people who are on calendar fiscal years. We're in Q4. And some of you out there, particularly carrying large sales quotas, maybe panicking a little bit right now or thinking, oh my goodness, like I still have this mountain to climb. I'm never going to do it. Uh, it's, uh, you know, there's only three months left. How am I going to get there? So I thought today Danny J could give us some insight into how do you reset your mind? How do you get rid of the excuses and how do you make sure you don't just hit your target, but exceed it before the end of the year? I love this. You know what's so funny? What I was thinking of as you were saying it's Q4 and just having these goals by the end of the year. The first thing that popped in my mind, and I've heard this before and I don't know who said it, but that 80% of the work gets done in 20% of the time. And I think that whenever we have a large deadline or like a big, big goal, and I don't know, at least for me personally, I get so much done at the last minute because it's that it's that impending, I don't want to say doom, but that, that impending deadline that comes up. And so I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, at least, I feel like a lot of us, maybe we're procrastinators, maybe not. But I think this is the time where you really get to see what you're made of. And there is really like, I had this uh, bracelet for a long time that said, believe in miracles. And I was working with a network marketing company and we do our sales quotas by the end of the month. And so anybody, I'm sure a lot of you guys do like end of month sales. So like 30th to 31st is crazy, so much going on. And I was trying to hit a certain goal and a certain rank by the end of the month. And I was about $15,000 away. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to bed. It's not going to happen. And my team, they knew that I was shooting for this goal. And I, I'm doing the math in my head going, even if this person and this person makes you know, a sale or sign somebody up, there's no way it's going to happen. And I woke up in the morning and I had passed the amount I was hit, shooting for. So they had made over $20,000 between the hours of like 11 p.m. and midnight on the East Coast. And I had gone to bed on the West Coast at like nine. So... After that, I started just saying believe in miracles because I think anything can happen. And if you set your mind and your intention to it, you can do it. But it's about getting really resourceful and honestly, not giving up until the bell rings. Um, one of my good friends, Ashley, uh, Ashley Ray, she's a sales, like sales trainer mm -hmm. from the UK. She says, Usain Bolt doesn't start running a race and like looking back at his time while he's running, he goes as fast as he can, crushes through the finish line, and then he turns around to see how he did. So right. I think a big thing is like, don't look at where you are right now. Just keep looking forward to where you want to go and keep sprinting towards the end. And then once you crush the finish line, you can look back and see where you might have been, where you might be able to do better. Yeah, because I, I could agree more, but because I, I think we're very good at sort of going, oh, well, it's only three months left. What can I do? Or this isn't going to happen. I don't have anything in my pipeline. We're very good at coming up with get out of jail cards, right? Yeah, and sort yeah. of excuses. But as, as you say, if you flip it over and you go, OK, if I keep focused and I keep going, I can make things happen. And I think that's part of it, isn't it? It's all about momentum. Yeah, it's definitely all about momentum and you know, many industries, they make the majority of their money and their profit at the end of the year during mm -hmm. the holidays, people are spending money. I know that not every industry is that way. Some industries slow down. You know, when I was in personal training, I was in one of those industries where the holidays were really slow. And then January one, mm -hmm. when everyone's making per uh, New Year's resolutions, I was crazy busy. So I understand that some industries um, kind of flip that way. But even if you're in something like personal training, what I started to do was do early sales, like incentives for you to sign up before mm -hmm. the 
rush of New Year's resolutions and just get really, really creative. I think we, we are all super resourceful. The one thing we have in our toolbox is our imagination and our mind. And if you can start thinking of ways that you can help your customer um, through like associated products or services, um, ways to get them to like make decisions before the, the beginning of the year, then you are able to really like leverage that and then run through the beginning of the year. But just use your brain, like get crazy, start writing things down on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper. If you can get really creative, you can come up with some really amazing stuff, especially when you're like foot is to the, like you're down to the wire, your foot's to the flame. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's a great, and I think that's a great piece of advice too, is because I think sometimes people forget how creative they are. Everybody's creative and particularly uh, you know, all of you in sales out there. I mean, sales is a very creative profession because you have to be, and you're creating almost a new solution for everybody you come across. Even if, even if you're selling the same product or service, you're still presenting a slightly different way. It's still meeting a slightly different need. So you're very creative people. And I think that's a great reminder is to, to get creative. Um, how about this thing of, okay, uh, this, no excuses. This is what I, what I really like is the, the no excuses piece. So what do you say when, when you're working with, with people, whether personally or with companies or whatever, how do you get them to adopt the no excuses frame of mind? Because let's face it, we're very good at excuses, right? Oh yeah. Well, where that really came from was when I was 20, 23 years old, I was paralyzed. I had a a uh, bacterial infection, and I wasn't able to walk for about a year. And I started being able to use a walker, and I was going to the gym, literally sitting on these like recumbent bikes and like using my hands to push my legs around. And as I was at the gym, I started to notice many, many other people who had handicaps, canes. Like I never noticed them in my twenties, right? You mm -hmm. just pay attention sure. to them or like that. And it hit me like, these people have no excuses. They're coming to the gym anyway. They have a walker. They're coming to the gym. They're using a wheelchair. They're coming to the gym. And suddenly I was going, wow, I was making a big deal of myself not being able to walk and having a pity party. And that was the moment where I'm like, okay, no excuses. Like this person can't walk and they're still like coming to the gym. This person has no legs and they're still doing something with their arms. So it turned into just a life philosophy of going, okay, whatever you think your disadvantages can also be an advantage. I, I work with a lot of women and sometimes I hear moms say, well, I'm a mom and I don't have time. And I, to me, I don't have children, but I look at a mom going, well, you have many more opportunities to meet people, to meet more prospects. Like if you're dropping your kids off at school, Mm -hmm. dozens and dozens of other mothers who potentially are contacts or people you can sell to. So I think take your perceived disadvantage and look at it from another perspective. And that could actually be your greatest advantage. And I really believe that we all have certain advantages, certain disadvantages, whether it's our location, you know, we're in a small town. I hear that like there's not enough people, but you have an opportunity to be the one, be the expert when you're in a small town versus mm -hmm. your New York city. You're one of many, you're one of millions. And so looking at that perceived disadvantage of going, how can I turn this into my greatest advantage and don't make any excuses about that. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a fantastic point, because if you think about it, the person who's in New York City could easily go, oh, well, New York City, it's so big, it's really hard to, to meet the right people and the right contact because it's so big. And the person in the small town is going, well, there's not enough people to meet or whatever. And, and really, if you flip it, the, the person in the, in the big city is saying, wow, I've got so many people to choose from, I just need to be targeted. And the small yeah. town person is saying, they're easier to get to. <laughs> yes, it's so true. It's like we all make up an excuse for why it doesn't work for us. And we can look at the other person why they think it's hard. And then they're, they're looking at you going, no, wait, you have it easier. Yeah. So I really challenge people to look at those, those stories they're telling themselves and go, is this actually true? And if I put myself in the opposite position, how would I, how would I work? And I think that it's, it's easy to do that because when we're not having success, and things feel like we're just reaching out and prospecting and, and talking to people and we're not getting anywhere, we get discouraged and that's totally understandable. But I think it does come down to just a story, you know, and we know in sales, that there's, there's ebbs and flows, there's ups and downs. We're not going to get a win. We're not going to get 10 out of 10. So we have to keep our mind right and go, cool, this is a numbers game. We need to talk to more people. We need to meet more people. We need to present our offer and maybe even look at your sales process and start asking mm -hmm. people 
to like role play. Maybe you're not asking for the sale enough, like you're meeting enough people, but your sales process is off somewhere. But you have an immense uh, opportunity to look at why you think you're not making the sale and flip that around and make it your advantage. Yeah, no, and I think that's a great piece of advice for everybody there to examine because I, I think you're 100% correct. I mean, we're very, we're very, very good at, uh, as I said, coming up with excuses but not looking at um maybe this is maybe it's only a couple of tweaks right maybe it's not you know that the what's holding you back isn't some monumental thing you know like you were talking about earlier when you had those you know physical challenges or whatever maybe what's holding you back is just a couple of tweaks here and there and and maybe just redoubling your efforts maybe sometimes we just need to give ourselves a kick in the backside it's so true. I think 90% of the time it is small tweaks. You know, when I was doing t- personal training and people were working, they wanted to do, they needed to lose weight. I did a lot of weight loss clients mm-hmm. and they go, okay, just tell me what to eat and what to work out. And I would look at all of their food. I'm like, do a food diary. Let's see what you're doing. And most of the time we didn't have to overhaul and give them a new diet. We just needed to change a few things. Like let's cut out alcohol to, you know, three nights a week instead of seven. And like <laughs> eat the same as what you're doing. Let's just make small tweaks. And that can make a big impact. You don't have to like all the sudden go vegan get rid of dairy get rid of gluten just to make some like let's do some small tweaks and they can make big changes and so i think the same applies in sales and just really just work is like let's just take a look and the effort you know i think we get into these ruts something worked for a while and the industry changes and honestly the plat everything changes i mean sales has changed so much from door to door back in the day to online sales and People don't have as much time anymore, so they want quick pitches. They want to know what they're mm-hmm. getting. So we maybe need to look at all of those things, like how has it changed? If I, Am I doing the same thing and the same um, presentation I did 10 years ago? And maybe I can make it shorter, more concise, direct to the customer and client so that they are like, cool, I got two minutes. Let me hear what you got. And maybe that's the piece that's going to make all the difference in the world. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more. I think it's always good to revisit what you were doing because uh, you mentioned sales process earlier. People often fall into the trap of putting together a sales process and then thinking, great, we have a sales process now. This will We don't have to worry about that for the next 10 years. Well, guess what? Uh, buyers change constantly, the market change constantly. So you have to constantly look at your sales process and be tweaking it. It's, it should be a dynamic thing, not a static thing. Oh, I can't, I couldn't agree more. Like sales has changed so much. You know, people are, consumers are smarter than ever. Mm -hmm. Their um, BS meter is higher than ever. (laughs) And so they want real, they want authentic, they want you. They don't want to feel like they're being sold to. They want a collaborative. They want to look at you as um, more of a like counselor on what they're trying to buy. And so I think that's super important to like really revisit your sales process and how you're interacting with people. Yeah, and also, I mean, to that point, I mean, uh, you know, buyers are more informed and all that than ever, but they're also bombarded. There's also too much information. So you have a fantastic opportunity to to be more consultative with them and help them through that process. And I think there, that's, again, I think sometimes, you know, sellers go, oh, well, it's really tough because they know more. And you go, well, yeah, they do, but they're also overwhelmed and it's really hard for them to make a decision because they have so much information. Yeah, I think the best thing, that's so true. Um, I think one of the best things we can help people do is to narrow things down and to look at like, what what do they really need? You know, you can walk into an electronic store and there's, so, you know, let's just say a simple, you think a simple decision is buying a television mm-hmm. and sure. then there's so many and you're going, okay, how about these uh, DPI? And there's things that a normal consumer doesn't even know or care about. Like, I I would walk in and that technological babble would just make me insane. I'm like, I just want my TV to do this, this, and this. And that's your job to go here. Then let's just pick from these three instead of these 300. And Mm -hmm. if you do that and help narrow them down, it will make it easier for them to buy and also be so grateful to you to like listen to what they really need and then show them just the things that help there. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's a critical piece, I, and I absolutely think you'll get rewarded for that uh, hugely, um, you know, by by customers because they're, as I said, completely you know completely overwhelmed. I mean, getting back to what you were saying about just those you know little tweaks, um, some of them I think are where your attention goes, right? I mean, what's it uh, is it Tony Robbins who says you know, uh, energy flows where attention goes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so we're all really busy today or we perceive that we are but in reality a lot of the time is we're very distracted right there's a lot of things distracting our attention and i think the other thing is to question 
where am I devoting my time? And as and as we were talking about, if you are struggling a bit now, well, there is that there is that temptation to go. Well, I could do this, but maybe I'll just look at ESPN for a while to make myself feel better, right? So, I mean, a part of it is where your attention goes. Yes, so true. I think it's really important to stay focused and have something like visually for me personally. When I was doing, especially network marketing, sales, Mm -hmm. um, tracking, you know, tracking my prospects, having a system where I'm like, okay, who have I talked to today? What step in the process? Have I shown them any information? Have I given them any information? Have I had a follow-up phone call? Because as you track, you know what you're actually doing. Sometimes it feels like, because we keep like lists in our head, right? Like, I'm going to call Sally back and then, oh yeah, I've got to talk to this guy and then I have to follow up with James. And so we think we got all of these things happening, but we didn't actually write them down and see what this looks like because like you said, things are all over and we maybe in our head think we have 20 uh, like pipes Mm -hmm. out there, like the lines thrown. And in reality, we only have three (laughs) Um, just because they're in our mind and we haven't actually done anything to them. So I think tracking is super crucial and it's actually the only way you can see if you're making progress or what part of things are maybe falling apart or not working so having a good tracking system kpis figuring out what are your key performance indicators and then looking at those will help you go forward and what you focus on grows so if you're focusing on certain kpis those are the things that are going to grow for you yeah, no, hundred percent, and uh, and I think then then you can really make, as you say, if you track everything, if you use a CRM, then you will, uh, or whatever system you use, and then you will be able to look at and see tangible, uh, some tangible evidence of what you're doing, as opposed to, yeah, you know, we're all so good. I was saying very good at uh, talking ourselves up in our heads, thinking, well, I'm doing everything. <laughs> Yeah. But if you maybe if you look then in in your CRM go, well, am I really? No, I haven't been doing as much as I thought I was doing. I think the honesty, the honesty is a good thing. I have fallen prey to my own self doing that, too, thinking I was doing way more than I did until I started, you know, tracking. And I even would suggest tracking one certain thing, um, you know, a month. So you can be tracking some kind of growth you can be tracking maybe getting more prospects that month than you did last month i mean there are a lot of different things you can track to see why things aren't working i know a lot of times a sale may take many many months so the work that you were doing in july is going to show up in november december so you also have to look if you're not making really great sales right now what were you doing 60 days ago and 90 days ago and that could be the key thing there so i would be able to flip back through your crm or wherever you're tracking and go what was I doing 60 days ago, 90 days ago? And maybe this is the big reason. And that is why tracking is super, super crucial. Cause I think a lot of sales processes do take more time than just like the show up, you know, buy in the moment. So tracking is crucial. Yeah. And I think that's another great point that you raised about is when things are going tough, sometimes what you need to do is take a step back and look at your previous successes and go, I did it before. And so what did I do? before to make myself successful and to make sure that you're doing all those things and then remind yourself what if I was successful before I can be successful again yeah I think what happens and this is just a natural human tendency I believe is that when we're you know we're not getting commission checks things aren't coming in suddenly we get you know scarcity we start freaking out so then we start prospecting we go 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 and then you know 60 days later or 30 days later all the sales start coming in so then we're like cool i'm doing amazing you weren't doing as much prospecting as you were because now you got all the sales coming in and then once those sales are gone suddenly you go through the famine part and so we go in the cycle of feast and famine we need to have a consistent system of continually doing the things that we did when we were freaking out that yeah. we're doing like when sales are good so that we don't have that crazy up and down thing Perfect. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. All right, well, we're bumping up against the end of our time. Uh, Before we go, though, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, um, what you do, and how they can learn more about you. Absolutely. So I'm a speaker um, and a podcast host. I speak to a lot of entrepreneurs and kind of two sides. So I do kind of more motivational speaking, speaking to women about how to rewrite your story. You know, a lot of stories we tell ourselves on like, 
I'm a mom and I can't do anything or I didn't go to college, so I'm not going to make any money. So I talk about how to rewrite the story. And then I also talk to entrepreneurs about how to share your story, uh, your brand story, your personal story to connect with your audience, to create a, a stronger bond, to get more customers, more fans. I work with a lot of people doing online sales. So we really want to connect with the people we buy from online. Um, and then I have a podcast called The Best Life Podcast, where we do entrepreneurship, relationships, really just kind of an all over uh, like personal development type podcast. And you can find me on social media. I'm on Instagram the most at dannyj.com. It's D-A-N-N-Y like a boy. And then the letter J, and then you spell out dot com, D O T C O M. And love chatting with people there. Um, I speak all over, so maybe I'll get to see some of you. Or if you'd love to have me uh, come to one of your places and talk to your people, I'm down for that too. Excellent, excellent. Listen, thanks, uh, Danny. This has been great. Uh, some great advice. Hope everybody takes it on board now and crushes the end of the year. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert inside interview very soon. Thank you. Thank you.